Hello, and welcome back to another episode of My Games Room. So uh, today we're going to be talking about Mass Effect, which is absolutely my favourite sci-fi setting of all time. I mean, I used to be really big into Halo, I'm a big fan of Star Trek, Babylon 5, I've been getting into recently, but Mass Effect has kind of topped all of them. And I figured I'd just tell you some stories and stuff about uh, my time with the series. Um, some were funny, some, well, maybe not as funny, but we'll see. So, we'll start with the first one, Mass Effect 1. Uh, originally exclusive to the 360, back, you know, when Microsoft actually cared about having exclusives to sell their freaking systems. And, a funny story, uh, I was meant to get this for Christmas, or I, I asked my mother for this for Christmas in 2007. Uh, shortly bef uh, about four or five months after I'd gotten my 360, my original one, for my birthday. And shortly after my birthday, I bought Gears of War, or I'd asked her to get me Gears of War, and the guy in the shop goes, you know this has people chainsawing each other's faces off, right? And she goes, that's fine. Cut to, I hear about Mass Effect, and I hear about the legendary alien side boob. Um, and naturally being 14, that makes me go, I'm going to need that game. Um, so, <laughs> I asked my mum for it, and I'm like, look, it's a 12. It's, you know, it, it it's Mass Effect, it looks really cool, sci-fi, blah, blah, blah. She goes, oh, but the Argos catalogue says it's an 18. And I'm like... Everywhere else says it's a 12. And, more importantly, you bought me Gears of War 1 shortly after my birthday. She made this bit of a song and dance about it until I was able to show her just a copy of it going, Look, it's a 12. She went, fine, fine. Um, little did she know about Alien Side Boob. And I'm, well, I know she'll watch this and, you know, sorry, ma'am. But here we are. <laughs> the thing is, I may have gone into it with... You know, ooh, you know, some somewhat unsavory thoughts, but I kind of discovered a really rich world, a really fantastic RPG, and combat that under absolutely no circumstances can I go back and play the original version of because it is just that bad. They tried to spruce it up uh, with a re-release, but um, unfortunately, it didn't go quite so well. But about three years later, uh, in 2010, we got Mass Effect 2. Now, I have a complex relationship with Mass Effect 2. Back in the day, I would play this game absolutely religiously. There was a time where I played it, I played through the whole thing three times in one week. So I finished it, thought, I'm going to do that again. I didn't change any of the decisions I made either, like, at all. I think I think on my first playthrough, Mir like, Miranda died, which I didn't care about. But then I went back, did it again, did it again. Um, and I did a final one shortly before Mass Effect 3 was announced. Because in, in the loading screen, it's like, make sure to keep your save for Mass Effect 3. So I was like, cool, I guess that's coming. So... That being said, um, going back to it nowadays, I find it's just a bit... The way I play Mass Effect is, is you know, less stick in cover and hide behind stuff. I think cover shooters have kind of gone the way of the dodo for a good reason. They're kind of boring. And whilst I love Mass Effect 2's characters more so than probably Mass Effect 1, outside of Rex and Tally and Garrus, but it helps that they're in Mass Effect 2. Um... I find its combat isn't as fun as uh, later entries in the series. So going back to it, for me, is a little bit difficult. Anyway, cut to 2012. And we get Mass Effect 3. Now, I'm going to be controversial, as I'm sure my opinion of Mass Effect 2 would tell you. Mass Effect 3 is my favourite one in the series. 
um, to the point where I picked Lady Shep on the front Shep on the front instead of Man Shep because let's be fair, Jennifer Hale is the superior performance over Mar over um Mark Mercer. I think his name is. That being said, I don't hate Mark Mercer. I I, I finally got round to doing another playthrough last year uh, with my wife. <laughs> We played through the whole trilogy outside of the first one because it was just so painful. And I did play as Man Shep for the first time ever, which was interesting. Um, I, I strictly did it to romance Tally because Tally is the best waifu in the game, not in real life. That's my wife, and I'm saying that because she's so funny. Anyway. <laughs> anyway. Despite her horror, find fake. Mass Effect Three has a lot more memories for me because, like, it, it, it's why I play through the trilogy each time. It's so I can go in with the story I want. It so I can go in with Rex. So I can go in with Garrus. So I can go in with everybody still alive in in ways that I want them to be. And this game remains the only one I've ever cried at twice. Um, first at Morden's death. Um, Morden is the kind of doctor in the second one, um, or scientist. Um, that being said, in three, he goes through this big arc involving a race called the Krogan. And, um, it's, it's kind of heart-wrenching to see a character you like so much die. Um, and knowing that you could stop him, but it would kind of cost too much within the context of the story and within the context of everything else that's going on and requires you to sacrifice another of um, my personal favourites, who is Rex. So, unfortunately, every single time Morden has died for me um, because I just don't really want to let that go. Yeah, I didn't actually talk about this, the DLC from 2. Most of it's terrible. Uh, most of it is really bad. You've got, um... Oh, God, what were they? You had Overlord, uh, which I played for the first time two years ago when the Legendary Edition came out, and it was really bad. You had Shadow Broker. Shadow Broker's not as bad. Shadow Broker's fine, and it's nice to have Liara as a playable companion in Mass Effect 2. But I'm going to... Again, kind of go out on a limb and say, nothing quite beats threes. So three had three DLCs, um, two of which I only played through again two years ago for the first time. And arguably the best bit of DLC anyone has ever made for any game ever. Um, in the form of Mass Effect 3 Citadel, but we'll get there. So... The first one is Leviathan. Leviathan is a... is a slog. It is a slog. I only ever do it because you get a pretty good reward out of it at the end. That and it's just more of that Mass Effect 3 combat that I like so much. By contrast, that follows on with a real gem that I wish I'd bought about 10 years ago. <laughs> um, Omega. So in Omega, you help retake the station from the first game, um, which is kind of the main... Not so much the main hub, but certainly like one of the major points of contact and in doing so you get some really sickeningly good combat and you get access to an ability that is just basically an absolutely enormous explosion in the form of flare and what's to say it's 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 just genuinely very very good story wise it's it's kind of its own isolated little thing it doesn't really affect the grand scope of the story in the same way Leviathan does um, in the Leviathan gets a lot of back backstory to the world and the characters and in but in general the, the process of getting to that point is, is really freaking boring but that brings us to Citadel I have never ever seen a game fan service itself as much as Mass Effect 3 Citadel most of the dialogue is in universe is like memes from Garrus talking about how he's got calibrations to do to to um, grunt basically crashing a police car that's on fire so he could grab some noodles. It's just insane. 
and it's all tongue in cheek and it's all very pulp sci fi. Um, I mean, there is a big reveal of a um, of a clone, and it's as hammy and as ridiculous as you'd expect it to be. Um, they take the Mickey out of Shepherd, something fierce. Um, there's a big meme about how the main character can't dance, and uh. That that is proven horribly wrong if you've romanced Garrus in this DLC because uh, you you go t you go tango dancing and it is it is very good <laughs> it's a very good scene um, for the last time I romanced Garrus but um yeah I've never seen quite a fitting send off to a series either now Mass Effect did continue and uh, will continue predominantly with um, some of the characters from three. I don't know how many, only one's been confirmed, and that's Liara, who's kind of the main. As far as I'm aware, she she's kind of the main intentioned um, love interest for Shepard. Um, she's romanceable from either gender, but um, yeah, that's not the point. Citadel basically just gives you, a, it, the whole excuse of it is to have a giant party with all of your companions, all of them react in a hundred different ways, and yeah. Last time I played it there was this um there was this glitch that I will attach to the end of this video where I'd managed to get James, who's kind of the new character for this, um glitched in such a way where he was obsessed with punching this boxing bag in my in one of the rooms uh, of the apartment that you can get and he even does it when he's talking to other characters and most importantly when you wake up the following morning he's meant to be making eggs and bacon in the uh <laughs> he's meant to be making eggs and bacon in the um kitchen but instead he's he's out at the boxing thing hitting it with a frying pan <laughs> ridiculous it's funny though but um it just it just tied into it just ties into Citadel thematically in a way that I thought I'd share with everybody. On a final note for three, it's one of the rare multiplayers I've played where I've actually played it and I've actually sunk a considerable amount of time into unlocking things and playing different maps and I would have got and I went back to it time and time again. Um Unfortunately, I was never able to rope any of my friends into buying Mass Effect um, 3 to play with me at the time. I did rope my wife into getting the Mass Effect series, but she couldn't get past one, um, which was a shame. So I've never really been able to discuss Mass Effect in as much depth or as much, you know, love as, as I've wanted to. Not that she, Not that she didn't support my love of it. I mean, she ended up buying me this boy. <laughs> Which is the art of Mass Effect, the entire Mass Effect trilogy. So you've got stuff like the Migrant Fleet, um, which is where Tally is from, to all sorts of guns, including this godforsaken SMG that you're stuck with if you play as a Vanguard for a good part of two, which don't, don't play as Vanguard in two, it's just not worth it. But then you get artwork of some of my favourite characters, like Kasumi, um, who. I'll be honest with you, 99% of the human characters in Mass Effect are incomprehensibly boring. They are extremely dull. I'd argue there are only really two of any note um, who are actually engaging or entertaining, uh, at least from my point of view. You have Jack. Jack's... Jack's fine. Jack's better in three, but um, the bulk of her appeal comes from playing as a male shepherd and romancing her which unfortunately you don't it's just not that compelling and i i didn't want to romance her specifically for her just kind of her attitude she's just kind of a bitch um then you get miranda miranda has an interesting arc she's part of a human extremist group called cerberus and then as time develops she realizes a they're an extremist group and b she recognises that she's more interested in protecting her sister than she is working for a deranged lunatic with holographic eyes. And yes, that makes more sense in context. 
However, the only I, I never really took those two into combat um, because the the powers aren't that good, and I don't find them particularly interesting. The two I did though were Zoid Masani, um, who is a DLC character in Mass Effect Two, and same with Kasumi Goto. Um, Kasumi's just fun. She's kind of this. She's not interested in getting in your pants like pretty much all of the other human characters. She she's grieving the loss of her lover Kenji. But at the same time, she's still, you know, she's just kind of fun to play with. Zaid, by contrast, is probably one of the genuinely few terrible people in in amongst all of the characters. Um, he he's a mercenary. He works for literally anyone. He ends up working for Cerberus at one point, and and um, he only kind of betrays them because he gets a suspicion that Shepard is um. Shepard is involved with the job he's with in any sort of way. So he kind of ditches that. But yeah, he he is, however, voiced wonderfully. And he's got this really thick kind of Cockney accent and just this kind of gruff ass attitude that makes him a delight to listen to. So I, I'm such a big fan of 3, I haven't bought the Wii U port. So I think you can kind of tell how much I like this series. Um, this is not a good way to play Mass Effect. It's definitely not a good way to play Mass Effect 3. It's not a good way to play any sort of Mass Effect. You don't have anything. <laughs> like, all it really adds is touch touch controls with the Wii U's giant-ass gamepad, which even then isn't that useful, and 3 had a similar thing with the Kinect. So I don't know what it is with Mass Effect 3 and attaching, like, really gimmicky technology to it. As much as I like the Wii U. Um, as I said earlier, Mass Effect did continue after 3. And we got Andromeda. I'll be honest with you, when I first heard about it, and I first heard about the facial animations, that was a big... That was a big no-no. That was a big, absolute, quintessential no-no, and I didn't buy it. And whilst it did sell well, it didn't... EA cancelled all DLC for it, and and I can guarantee you that the next game will either won't be centred around Ryder, who's the new Shepherd for this, and it won't be centred around her her crew. Instead, it will be centred. I think we're I think we're either going to go back to Shepherd, which cool, more Jennifer Hale, always on board with that, um, and or it might go with someone new. I I'm hoping not new. Because uh, the only confirmed character coming back from Mass Effect 4 is the R. Or Mass Effect 5, I guess. That being said, I bought it a few years after the fact. And Andromeda isn't as bad. Isn't as bad. It feels like playing a better playing Mass Effect 1. And if anybody remembers Mass Effect 1 for anything, it's its story. And whilst this doesn't hit the same heights, and it certainly doesn't have as good an antagonist... Um, in it, it it does have one benefit. Its characters are very, very good. They're very, very good. Vetronix is probably one of my favourite characters in any Mass Effect game, strictly for being a Turian who's not quite as Turian. Um, you've got a grumpy old Krogan. I know, it's very similar to Rex, but at the same time, he's more of a granddad. He's literally the ship's granddad, and he's quite fun to listen to. I do enjoy Drek. Unfortunately for Andromeda, it has my least favourite Mass Effect character of all time, which is freaking Liam. Liam is everything that was bad about Ashley and Jacob and Caden, in that he's boring, he's arrogant, and he's a dumbass. And he's just, like, I, I use him for the first mission, and then I genuinely forget he's on board the ship. I did his loyalty mission for the first time last year, and I ended up calling him a novice at the end of it, because you can, and he is. He's an idiot. So that was kind of the last I'd played of Mass Effect until we got the Legendary Edition. If you're going to play Mass Effect nowadays, you play this. You play this version, or you play PC, or you play Xbox One, or whatever. But you play the Legendary Edition, because at the end of the day, it's got all the DLC on it. 
Nearly. It doesn't have um, one for Mass Effect 1, which was called Pinnacle Station, because I think the source code was screwed or something. So um, it was either wait six months and reprogram the entire thing that's kind of useless, and you have a variant of the kind of... Uh, so it had a combat simulator, and that's in Mass Effect 3 anyway, so just, just play this version. It's very, very good. It's where I go to play Mass Effect now. That being said, there has been a longing. There has been a longing to play Mass Effect again. But new. No. I played the trilogy so bloody much. I have played Mass Effect 2 more times than I can count. I've played Mass Effect 3 even more than that. So, I'm always on the lookout for something that's a little bit like Mass Effect and a little bit like how it used to be. So I ended up picking up uh, literally a couple of weeks couple of weeks ago ever each project eden because i'd heard it's kind of an indie style mass effect and it is not <laughs> it is not ever reach it, it i'm only mentioning it here because it's not the same it's not the same and i'm really hoping that in the next few weeks at some kind of showcase or or anything that we'll be hearing about it because it's that time of year where we start hearing about new games and I'm really hoping that Mass Effect will be on that list because I have been waiting 10 years for a good new one and whilst I do like Andromeda it's it's not three it's not two it's not even one it's I do rank it quite highly but it, it's not the same it's not the same as the characters it's not as well written it's just a disappointment and to not have Shepard and Co. gallivanting around the galaxy killing giant monsters is, is not the same. So I'm hoping that we'll hear more about that soon. But yeah, uh, that was my time with Mass Effect. Um, I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you liked the video. Um, if you could click like and subscribe, that would be fantastic. And uh, I will see you next week. Cheers, guys. Signing off.